chapter one equations and inequalities uh, in this chapter we're going to take a look at about seven sections by the time we get through this chapter but this is just the first of the seven lecture series for chapter one uh, we're going to actually start in section 1.1 and begin with linear equations so what is an equation well, an equation, if you recall, is a statement that two mathematical expressions are equal. So, for example, I can come up with an equation that says x plus 5 is equal to 10. So, I have a statement on the left, x plus 5, and <clears throat> the statement on the right is simple. It's just the number 10. Or I could have something like 2m plus 3 is equal to m minus 6, equality of two algebraic expressions. Now, we oftentimes like to solve equations. What do we mean by solving an equation? That means we want to find all number or numbers that make the equation a true statement. Now, the numbers that we will find if there are, if they exist, because not all equations have solutions, but if they do, then the numbers are solutions. We also call them roots of the equation, just like the root on a tree. The roots of the equation now a number that is a solution of an equation we say satisfies the equation so the solution of an equation make up its solution sets so if there's the solution set could have uh, one solution two three depending on the equation now if equations have the same solution sets they are called equivalent equations so for instance for instance if i have x equals 7 and then i have x minus 1 equals uh, 6 well these have the same solution right in this second equation a 7 minus 1 will uh, uh well i'm sorry add 1 so a 7 minus 1 is 6 so 7 is also a solution in the second one right and I can have uh, other forms of equations that have solution x equals 7 so all of these would be equivalent equations now for instance if I have something like x squared is 100 and x is equal to 10 these are not equivalent equations right they're not exactly the same although 100 is 10 squared however the solution set for the first equation is going to be 10 and negative 10 while the solution set for the second equation is only 10. so strictly speaking these are not equivalent equations because this one the second one leaves out the solution uh, that works in the other equation therefore they're not the same in other words these are different equations now one way we solve these equation is to rewrite the equation as a series of simpler equi equivalent equation and to do that we use a couple of properties important properties about all equations not just linear equations and these are the addition and multiplication properties of equality so let's take a look at the addition property of equality first of all the addition uh, property of equality is pretty simple a uh, one-liner if two things are equal then i can actually add a third number c c is any real number could be positive or negative then we can add c to both sides of an equation and the result would be an equivalent equation that means the solution will not be altered nor changed again a b c here are real numbers now you can add positive or negative numbers and the addition property also you can it works we don't have a subtraction property but you can actually subtract from both sides and the reason for that is because remember we can think of addition as subtraction with opposites so for example for example let's say i have x uh, plus 4 is equal to 10 and using addition property i can add a negative 4 to both sides see i added a negative number and this will actually solve the equation the solution is 6 
That means if you plug in a 6 for x, add 4 to it, the result will be 10. So notice in here I added negative 4. Let me write that. I added the number negative 4. Now what if I subtract 4, right? Some people say, well, why don't you subtract 4 from this both sides? Well, uh, we can actually do that. To add negative 4 is to subtract 4. And here is why. Let me give you what I mean as the subtraction is addition with opposites. Suppose I have uh, on an unrelated separate uh, note here, 10 minus 3. So operation is subtraction. So I can change the subtraction to addition with opposite of 3 is negative 3 and the result is 10, 7. That's the same as subtracting 3 from 10. So we say subtraction is addition with opposites. Okay, so it's for that reason that we really do not need a subtraction property of equations. Okay, now the other property of equations that uh, comes in quite handy for us is the multiplication property. Uh, multiplication property of equations. Kind of starts like the addition does. If two things are equal, this time we can multiply both sides by a third number c then ac equal bc without changing uh, the solution to that equation okay and of course c here cannot be zero because if you multiply by zero we're going to lose our equation and that's not what we want to do we get zero equals zero which is the trivial case so multiplication property again we can multiply both sides by any number. Remember in both cases, multiplication as well as addition, whatever we do, we do to both sides, whether it's add, subtract, multiply, or divide. Now we don't need a division property because division is sort of embedded in the multiplication property. And the reason for that is because uh, division is multiplication with reciprocals. So for that reason, again, it is possible to view division as multiplication. Now, here's how we view division as multiplication. Suppose I have 10 divided by 2, right? The answer clearly is 5. That's division. Now, how can I see this as a multiplication with reciprocal? Well, to divide 10 by 2 is to multiply. See, there's your multiplication. And then we do reciprocal of 2. Reciprocal of 2 is 1 half, so 10 times 1 half is 5, and of course you get the same outcome. Therefore, division is indeed multiplication with reciprocals. All right. And uh, so those are the two properties we use quite often for any, to solve any equations. Now our focus in this section is on linear equations. So what is a linear equation uh, in one variable? So let me write that linear EQ N short for equation in one variable means one unknown. Remember the variables are unknown. We usually use X. So the form that we're going to use is ax plus b equals zero for now. The simple version, the simplest, I should say, version. And here again, a may not be zero because if a is zero, zero times x is zero and b will be zero, everything will be zero. Okay. Now this is also called a first degree equation because the greatest degree on the variable, the only degree on the variable is one. So we call these first degree equations. All right. Now, how do we solve a first degree equation? So let me make up an example. Suppose I want to solve three times two X minus four equal to seven minus X plus five. Okay. So I have a linear equation now. To solve means isolate the variable x. Now to do that, we need to simplify both sides of this equation and then quite possibly uh, use either addition or multiplication or both properties to isolate x. So I'm going to distribute first 3 on the left side. That makes it 6x minus 12 
and on the right side I'm going to distribute the negative I'm going to get minus x minus 5 and then let's see on the right side 7 minus 5 would be 2 minus x on the left side nothing just carry on now to solve means to isolate so there you go simple you want to solve we want to isolate x usually we isolate x on the left side doesn't matter left right side as long as x is by itself now to do that i can actually use the addition property in this one i'm going to add x to both sides now the reason we add x to both sides again because we can see on the right side opposites add to zero and we're going to get 7x minus 12 equal to 12 and then to isolate x further uh, i'm going to add use addition property again and we're going to add 12 to both sides of this equation and i'm going to end up with let's see 7 7x equals 14. now we can actually use the uh, multiplication property of equations i'm going to divide both sides by seven and sure enough there you go nice uh, 14 divisible by seven therefore i just end up with a nice integer x is equal to two and that would be the solution to the equation and as always we can always check uh, the solution by plugging in to the original equation you always plug in the original equation not in between because in between we man manipulate these quite a bit so we always go back to the original equation substitute and you should get a true statement so i will leave that for you to if you would like to check or verify the solution but this was an example uh, of solving linear equations in one variable okay now let's take a look at uh, other kinds of equations now this particular one this next one that i'm gonna do uh, it doesn't look like a linear equation right off the bat so for instance 2x plus 4 again this is a different example divide by 3 plus uh, 1 half x i'm gonna set it equal to let's say 1 quarter x minus 7 thirds now notice I have fractions in this equation and I'm sure most students not just students nobody likes working with fractions so as much as possible we would like to do away with fractions and there is a way to actually get rid of all fractions in simply one step the key is to multiply both sides remember the multiplication property allows us to multiply both sides by anything so why not multiply by the LCD the LCD of 2 3 4 and 3 the least common multiple of those is going to be see 2 times 3 6 4 times 3 12 seems to be 12 12 is the least the smallest common multiple again uh, 24 would work 240 would work but we don't want big big multiples we want the least the smallest multiple so i'm going to multiply both sides of this by 12 in other words let's do that and see what happens here okay on the left when i multiply divide uh, multiply 12 times fraction 12 divided by 3 is 4 so that's simply going to be 4 times 2x plus 4 and distribute to the second fraction 12 divided by 2 that would be 6x and on the right side to multiply 12 times a quarter we get 3x 12 times 7 divided by 3 well 12 divided by 3 is going to be 4 4 times 7 28 there you go so we're going to distribute from the right as well as from the left now when we do that we're going to get notice how fractions disappear and we get this nice uh, linear equation that we can uh, simplify in the next step so what do we have to do next we need to remove parentheses we do that by using distributive property so 4 times 2 that would be 8x 4 times 4 is 16 plus 6x equals on the right side we have 3x negative 28 okay and we have those 
Now on the left side, you can combine like terms, eight and six, that's 14 X plus 16 equals three X minus 28. All right. And uh, we need the variable on one side. So I'm going to subtract three X. So I have my variable on the left side that makes it 11 X equal negative 28 and then subtract 16 from both sides so 11x equals negative 44 and the last step is the multiplication rule we divide by 11 and x would be negative 4 and there we have it so we do have a solution indeed to this equation all right notice the equation uh it well it was a linear it, it is a linear equation uh, although we have fractions and uh, it's just the fractions got in the way you can see it clearly here once we got rid of fractions this becomes a linear equation so we didn't have to convert it to a linear equation because to begin with it was a linear equation okay now when we talk about the equations notice these two examples that i did they work for example this first one works when x is 2 the second the most recent one i just worked works when x is negative 4. they are not going to work for any other values of x okay so these kind of equations these are called conditional equations they only work under this condition for the first one that x must be 2 and for the second one x must be negative 4. so that's what makes them conditional so conditional equations have a finite number of solutions they only work for specific values there are three types of equations in our work we have conditional like the ones you saw where it has a finite solution that only works in the equation for those value or values of x some equation may have two answers but it only works for those two answers which makes it still conditional the other type of equations are identities so let me just say identity and the last one the last type would be a contradiction so we already looked at conditional remember conditional only work for a specific value or values of x now let's look at identities an example of a identity suppose i have 2m minus 4 equals to 2m minus 8 on the other side now when i distribute the 2 to the parentheses i get 2m minus 8 equals 2m minus 8 notice how the two the left and the right side are identical to each other but let's say i didn't catch that and i'm going to go further with this in order to get variable on one side i'm going to subtract it from the right so i'm going to do negative 2m on what both sides so happens the variable disappears on the left and now i have negative 8 equals negative 8 and at this stage in the process you realize the variable has disappeared but nonetheless uh, th this is a true statement i mean negative eight is equal to itself so this statement is indeed true and this is often the sign of an identity when you work the equation through the process somehow the variable disappears and we end up with um, just numbers on either side that are the same could be negative 8 equal negative 8 10 equal 10 0 equal 0 1 equal 1 whatever it may be okay depends in on depends on the equation as long as you get a true expression so this is the sign of an identity the solution the solution for identities uh, if we have an identity the identity simply uh, determines the type of equation what is the solution then here like for this one well it turns out to be any number that you want it to be the variable disappear on both sides anyhow so it's independent of what i choose so solution for identity is going to be all real numbers 
not all real numbers however we can write them for uh, identities if it's all real numbers some textbooks use this notation the funny looking r for all real numbers okay and if you want to use a set notation there you go uh, all x such that x is an element of the set of real numbers this means belongs to this is the set membership notation this it simply means x is an element of and this is the set of real numbers so that's the set builder notation or simply write it out so we talked about two of those conditional and identity the last type of equations are contradictions so what is a contradiction uh let's take a look at a contradiction now a contradiction is what you would think it to be means uh something contradicts means it just negates what the thing is right so suppose i have x plus 7 is equal to x minus 4. this is an equation and i want to solve for x using addition property i can subtract x from both sides the variables disappear and I get 7 equals 7 and of course that's not true this is a false statement now because the statement is false therefore the implication is that this is a contradiction now, that again identifies the type of equation not the solution what is the solution to a contradiction well because it's false no matter what I choose for x the solution here simply there are no solutions now the no solution notation we can use the greek phi which means uh, an empty set if you put a set here the set has nothing in it an empty set for solution and that is a notation we use for uh, equations that are contradictions okay and uh, let's see aside from that let's take a look at uh, some examples now okay so that's all the lecture about linear equations in one variable we wanted to talk about in this section now the examples that we're going to look at suppose i want to solve 5x plus 4 is equal to 3x minus 4 we have variables on both sides we need it on just one side usually we like to have them on the left side usually doesn't mean you couldn't have it on the right side so subtract 3 from 5 we get 2x plus 4 is equal to negative 4 to isolate the variable now I'm going to subtract 4 so notice I use the addition property of equations twice and next i'm going to use the multiplication property divide by two and that would solve x is negative four now linear equations um, if the, you can find the solution for them uh, you can check the solution then they work the domain of uh, linear equations again if it has a solution the domain of linear equation is going to be all real numbers so that means uh, pretty much as long as the number works in the equation that's fine all right so there is an example let's take a look at another example this next example i have 3x plus 5 negative 5 times x plus 1 and that's going to be equal to 6x plus 7. so how are we going to solve this one i have 3x plus 5 let's distribute the 5 and be mindful of the negative so it's really negative 5 times x negative 5 times 1. in the left we're going to combine like terms so i get negative 2x 5 and negative 5 add to 0 that's good i have 6x plus 7. all right now i could have the variable on the left side uh, i'm going to subtract 6x from both sides be easier if we actually add 2x to both sides so i end up with a positive coefficient on x on the right side but that's fine just to show you it doesn't matter it works either way now i need to divide by negative 8 and this will give me the solution x is equal to a fraction negative 7 eighths so this one also has a solution the solution set negative 7 eighths 
this one, the solution set is negative four. All right, so those are the two examples. Let's take a look at another example. In this next example, this would be like the fourth one, right? That we're doing at least the fourth one. Again, practice, folks. Practice is everything. The more you do, the merrier in math and in any field. 2x plus 22. Uh, let's make it a little more complicated. There you go. So we've got the variables on both sides, and I also have grouping symbol, in this case, parentheses on both sides. So let's distribute and get rid of parentheses. So remember, to in order to clear the equation from parentheses, we use distributive property. This one, I've got 22, distribute 3 onto 2 and onto the other 2, 2x and 2, we get 6x plus 6. And let's see, I'm done with the left side. On the right side, I got 2 and 6 made 8x, 22 and 6 make 28. Ah, look at the left and the right, they're identical. So this one is an identity. All right, so what is the solution for identity? The solution is all real numbers, or simply in, in uh, the braces, just write all real uh, numbers. Okay, and that's what that one is. Let's try another one. This time, 2 times x minus 8 equals 3x minus 16. Distribute. And uh, let's say I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. This time I want x on the right side. Notice because the coefficient is positive. And then I'm going to add 16 to both sides. And when we do, we get x is 0. 0 equal x means x is 0. And there you have it. There we have the conditional equation, right? This one is conditional. So all equations that have at least one solution. Later on, we're going to look at some chapters where we have more than one solution. For example, quadratic equations have, usually they have two solutions. Uh, well, they always have two solutions, but usually they have two different solutions is what I meant. So as long as there's a finite number, even if an equation has five solutions, that's conditional. So if it doesn't, contradiction, if it has, regardless of how many, as long as they're finite, not infinite uh, number of solutions. If they have infinite, then it's an identity. All right, and let's take a look at uh, maybe one more example here of this. Uh, suppose I have four times x plus seven. We're gonna equate it to two times x plus 12 and uh, plus 2 times x plus 1. All right. Again, remove parentheses. That'll be 4x plus 28 and 2x. Oops, my x doesn't look impressive. There you go. 2x plus uh, 24 and uh, 2x plus 2. Now on the right side, 2 and 2 makes 4x, 24 and 2 makes 26, whereas 20, on the left side, I have 4x, 28. Subtract 4x from both sides, and we end up with <coughs> a false statement. Remember, a false statement is when you get a number that doesn't equal to the other number on the other side. So the implication, this is a contradiction. That's the type of equation. And what is the solution for a contradiction? The solution is that. Now, some book use this symbol. So I either use a slash, I use this, it doesn't matter. As long as we know what we're using. <laughs> all right. Now, <clears throat> so that's all we want to do about solving linear equations in one variable. Also, sometimes you're given formulas and we want to solve for those variables in a formula. Example, so for instance, uh, this famous formula, the force of gravity. K 
capital G, universal gravity, gravitational force, capital M, mass of the larger object, little m, mass of the smaller object, R squared is <clears throat> the distance, square of the distance between them. So let's say we want to solve this for M. Okay, so a formula shows relationship amongst variables. So in this case, I've got one, two, three, four. G is a constant. Uh, this is gravitational constant. Just happen to know that. So it's really not a variable, either, although they use a letter for it. So I got four variables in this one. So this is the relationship between these four variables. Now, um, we want to solve for M means we want to isolate M. Okay, so uh, to isolate M, I can multiply both sides of an equation by R squared. And if I do that on the right side, times R squared, notice the R squares cancel. So in my next step, I have F times R squared is equal to capital G, capital M, lowercase m. Now to isolate for lowercase m, I'm going to divide both sides by capital G, capital M, GM, like the automaker. <laughs> These cross out and we have solved for M. Again, to solve for a variable means to isolate it. Divided by cap G, cap M. And there we have that one. Notice I still don't know what the values are. We are not given a value, but we did what we were supposed to do. We want to solve for M. Okay. Let's solve another equation where we don't have all the numbers. So for example, let's say I have AX plus B equals to three times X minus A. Suppose I want to do that one. And we want to solve for X. Because it's like, how do you know whether I want to solve for A or B or X? Well, let's do it for X. X is unknown. A and B, by the way, we assume are numbers. So let's do this for X. Well, the left side, there's nothing I can do on the left side, but I could distribute on the right side. And that's what I did. Next, because we want to isolate X, get it by itself. So I'm going to add a 3A to both sides. Now on the left, I have AX plus B plus 3A, and to the right, I have 3X, correct? So what are we gonna do next? Well, uh, let's see, we need to get our X's on one side, right? Because we wanna solve for X, so you need to have X on one side. Therefore, what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna um, subtract ax from both sides you could add 3x i'm sorry subtract 3x from both sides also in the end the answer will be the same so so far i have b plus 3a is equal to 3x minus ax now 3x minus ax these are like terms right remember like terms have the same variable but possibly different coefficients the 3 and the A are coefficients on X. Coefficient. Okay. Now, um, because they're like terms, we can factor the X out. And there you go. We get 3 minus A. On the left side, I'm just going to go alphabetical. How about that? A followed by B. B plus 3A, 3A plus B, they're the same, aren't they? And the last step is divide by 3 minus A. And there you go. That solves it. So X is equal to 3A plus B over 3 minus A. And that is how we can solve for X. Okay. Uh, notice all we're doing is using addition, multiplication, addition, multiplication, property of equations. So... I think that's probably good enough for this video. We're going to keep it uh, below one hour as much as I can so you guys don't get too bored with it. Remember to watch the videos entirely, but if it's too long, try to break it off into like five, ten minute sessions. But please do watch them 
because I tend to work problems that are like the homework and like the exams uh, in addition to just uh, trying to do s s really good problems here all right so that's all we want to do in this video linear equations thank you for watching as always and uh, uh, take care